Prophecy is a very popular subject in fiction. I don't know how many fantasy books and films I saw growing up featuring a prophecy. Some old, perhaps half crazy character will be going on about a prophecy, and you would be made to wonder is the hero of our story going to be the one who will fulfill this mysterious prophecy? And then, sure enough, as the story continued, he would then prove to be the one spoken of in the prophecy. The ancient, obscure prophecy would be fulfilled. Films like The Matrix, Star Wars, Hercules, the Disney film, The Fifth Element, Lime Witch and Wardrobe, Harry Potter, and then computer games, not to mention fancy computer games. Loads of them feature a prophecy and fulfillment pattern. Whilst our world has been flooded with talk about prophecy in the world of books and films, it's almost as if humanity has collectively decided that prophecy belongs in the category of fiction. But the amazing thing is, our faith, can, our faith is centered around prophecy fulfillment. Real historical prophecy fulfillment is characteristic solely of the Christian faith. Solely. This isn't all religions, this is just Christianity. The fact that Jesus Christ fulfilled nearly 300 biblical prophecies written hundreds of years prior to, his prior to his incarnation should be a big deal for us. It should be something that strengthens our faith. It should overwhelm us and lead us in praise of God. And it should be a weapon in our armory when we need to prove the truth of the Catholic faith. So today I want to talk about the place prophecy has in our religion, how it should affect our lives and how we share our faith. But first of all, how is prophecy possible? What is it? Our God sees all and knows all. Every single day of our existence is known to him even before it comes into being. In his sight, everything is equally present before him. What an amazing God we worship, so far beyond us, so powerful, all-knowing and all-seeing. When a prophet utters something, it isn't from his own power or intelligence. It is the true God lifting the veil that covers future events. The prophet is given a glimpse of God's perspective of time, where past, present and future are all at once. God let the Old Testament prophets foresee the days of the Messiah and he let them write about those wondrous events. And sometimes God even used a prophet to write things that the prophet didn't really understand. Strange things, but things which were always before God's eyes. Things that would only make sense a thousand years later after the incarnation and life of our Savior, Jesus Christ. So that's how prophecy works. But how are these old prophecies still important for us? Well, prophecies are like the credentials which Jesus Christ arrives to earth with. If, let's say, a diplomat arrived in London and he claimed that he was from Madagascar, he would need to have the papers and documentation to prove it. Prophecies are like God's documentation to help the world identify the Messiah. So prophecies are important for us when we try and share our faith. We can use them to point out the credentials of Jesus Christ. Some of the reasons why people should pay attention to him. No one else has come into the world with their life already pre-announced. No other religious figure ticks this box. Maybe Our Lady in the Proto-Evangelium. Uh, maybe St. John the Baptist, but no religious founder, so-called religious founder, ticks this box. Think about Muhammad. No one was expecting Muhammad, the founder of the false religion of Islam. No one could have told you what his life would be like before he was born. He doesn't have credentials. No one was expecting Buddha, the false teacher of Buddhism. No one could have told you what his life was going to be like before he was born. He didn't have credentials. He didn't have the credentials of the prophet, of a prophet. None of these figures had credentials of a prophet that could be tested and that were tested. Jesus Christ alone comes into the world 
expected. It really annoys me about about Muslims in particular. You look back in the sixth century, no Christian, no Jew is expecting, no Arab is expecting some prophet to come on the scene to begin a new religion. But our Lord Jesus Christ, he comes into the world expected. His life, the life of the Messiah was mapped out hundreds of years prior to his birth and the Jews knew it. This line of argument is something that Jesus himself picked up to prove his identity. We see this in the gospel. Our Lord quotes pieces of Isaiah. On one occasion, he says this to John's disciples. He says, tell John the Baptist what's happening. Tell John he can be sure that I am the Messiah because the prophecies are coming to pass. And since the very early days of Christianity, showing the fulfillment of prophecy has been a bread and butter method of evangelization. I saw a show recently where some non-church goers, a mixture of Muslims, lukewarm Christians, agnostics, they were given the text of Psalm 22 to read over and to decide who this described and when it was written. It was a really great experiment because all of the guys interviewed said that they thought the text probably applied to Jesus Christ and suggested it was probably written sometime, it would have been written sometime after his death by Christians. Now Psalm 22 is obviously about Jesus Christ, but it wasn't written by some group of Christians. The text was written by Jews, a Jew, nearly a thousand years earlier. This is the psalm that reads, Parched as burnt clay is my throat, my tongue cleaves to my jaws. They tear holes in my hands and my feet and lay me in the dust of death. They divide my clothing among them. They cast lots for my robe. It's a psalm we all know. What incredible value that psalm has in sharing the truth that Jesus is the promised Messiah, the only figure pre-announced whose life was expected and outlined years before his birth. We are not dealing here with, here with vague predictions, the kind of thing the kind of thing Mystic Meg used to come out with on the National Lottery Show in the 90s. You know, she would say things like, the winner of tonight's lottery is a woman who is putting clothes into a washing machine, a man who is putting the kettle on. He's going to win big. That kind of thing doesn't prove anything. But... A virgin will conceive and bear a son. She will call his name Emmanuel. That is powerful. Or again, you Bethlehem, Ephrata, though you are small among the clans of Judah, out of you will come from me one who will be ruler over Israel, whose origins are from of old, from ancient times. We need to try and let ourselves be encouraged and overwhelmed by these prophetic utterances. Why not try and get a conversation going about these prophecies with your family this weekend? Only a God's eye view of history could have pre-announced the, these events. And it is the same God who has pre-announced the events that are yet to pass. The events relating to our Lord's second advent, his return to judge the world. The prophet Isaiah never got to see the Virgin Mary bear her son. And the psalmist never saw the crucifixion of the Messiah. But truly, those events came to pass because it was God who pre-announced them. We Christians are in a position of knowing key details about the future. What a privileged position we've got. God didn't need to reveal those things to us, but he has because he loves us and he wants us to be encouraged to hold fast, not to lose our faith in times of testing. The things God has foretold will all come to pass, just as the prophecies of the first coming of the Saviour most certainly came to pass. God's word is to be trusted. After all, God says that when he sends his word out, it always brings about its intended effects, just as reliably as when he sends out the rain for the field to sprout with grass. In this interim period, we need to be like those prophets who waited, confident that God will fulfil his promises. Those prophets who waited patiently and trusted in the Lord. It is a wonderful and joyous thing that we are waiting upon. The return of our Holy Saviour. The creation of a new heavens and a new earth. The death of death. The end of suffering. 
All this for those who believe and trust in God's promises. In summary, by becoming more deeply immersed in how wonderfully God fulfilled his promises in the past, we can go in praise of God's great faithfulness to his word. We can be more equipped to lead others to appreciate the credentials of Jesus Christ. And we can grow in faith that all that remains to be fulfilled will be fulfilled according to God's providential designs. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen.